These wood and gray tree frogs have no detectable brain activity, no blood circulation, and no heartbeat. But they are very much alive. In fact, they are in a unique state of suspended animation, which allows them to survive through winter, frozen. So the green gray tree frog is one of the six or so species of frogs that are capable of surviving in North America all winter frozen solidly. In the summertime, they live in trees. You hear them sort of barking in the fall sometimes, whack, whack, whack. And then they just slither down the tree, live in the roots, and then boom, they freeze all winter. This is a female. She's pregnant with eggs. When they freeze in the winter, the females are full of eggs and the eggs freeze along with the mother. They build up large amounts of sugar in order to protect themselves. And then when warmth again comes and the ground thaws, they pull themselves out of the ground, go to ponds in the woods, mate, lay eggs, and the system goes on again. So how do these frogs survive when up to 65% of the water in their body turns to ice? It takes a series of adaptations that work together. The frogs are cold-blooded, which means they take on the temperature of their surroundings. Sugar and protein in their body also help by acting as an antifreeze. And antioxidants prevent damage to the cells. The strategies of freeze tolerance seem very simple, but animals that don't survive freezing, including humans, can't do them at all. They switch over their metabolism to make huge amounts of sugar. They turn on new and novel genes to make proteins to help them. And they re-sculpt their cells in order to live with all of that ice. They reorganize themselves, turn off most of their metabolism, and live in a state of suspended animation. If you took a water frog and tried this, they'd just die from the freezing. But wood frogs and these frogs, these tree frogs, can do it each and every time. One of the main reasons we feel that a frog is able to freeze, or any of the animals we test here, their freeze tolerance, are able to withstand these harsh conditions, are through the use of their enzymes. They seem to use them in a different fashion. Not necessarily that they have different enzymes, just that they the way they're regulated, the way they're controlled during the, uh, their stress conditions or their, when they're frozen versus when they're just normal hopping around uh, can, are greatly different. Other animals like bears, squirrels, or bats spend their hibernation in underground tunnels or caves. But for these frogs, freezing is an essential part of survival. One of the aspects about uh, the way that frogs turn down their metabolism is that it's like shutting down a vehicle for a little while. Um, it ends up saving on fuel rather than having an engine idle for months at a time and not necessarily going anywhere, but burning all of its fuel. If temperatures rise and a frog is not able to freeze during the winter months, um, it's in a cold environment, but it's not shutting down its metabolism as it should be doing for the four months of our Canadian winter, if not longer, then it will burn off a lot of the fuel that it needs for other parts of its life cycle. If frogs who have not frozen during the winter don't have the, necessarily, uh, the necessary fuel conserved, if they don't have it built up, then they won't have uh, the necessary resources to allow it to survive, to allow it to go on in life. Thawing out early as a result of climate change may leave the frogs without a food supply and cause them to seek out new territory. Food never suddenly appears in winter. These animals eat insects and the insects don't come back till the insects come back. So the bad news is it'll warm up but there's no insects. These animals will probably be very strongly affected by global warming. At the southern end of their range at the far south end, like in uh, North Carolina or South Carolina, where they live in the mountains, if there's no more ice and no more snow, if it warms up to that extent, they won't be able to live. And I'm afraid they'll die out in those areas. People should realize that there's hundreds, even thousands of different species of animals that are awake and all around them living. And the funny thing is, there's also thousands of species sometimes in the warm, sometimes in the cold, that are actually asleep. That if you pick them up, they would look dead to you, but they're actually alive. 
And so even though we can't do it, you shouldn't think it, magical things, essentially, don't happen all the time. Animals coming back to life from suspended animation.